I think I'm live. Pretty sure that's how this works. Hi. I know there's nobody here. I assume there's nobody. But um, I'm going live today because, well, first of all, because I don't have a video editor and I need to make an entry for my good buddy. John's Comics with Kids is doing a contest that ends tomorrow? Friday? It ends very soon, and I have uh, been slacking. I have been meaning to enter this contest of his for quite a while, if only to get my feet wet and making more videos on my own channel. So here I am. I'm going live, and John has a giveaway that he's doing right now. It's over in a couple of days. It's over on the 1st. If you feel inclined, like I do, to make an entry for this contest, get on it, because it's almost over. He is asking for recommendations to tell to tell a story, I guess, about um, a comic that meant a lot to you as a kid or a comic that you feel would be um, appropriate for kids. Hi, people are here. That's exciting. Hello, Mr. Garrell and Comic Books NYC. How are you? I hope you can hear me. I don't go live by myself ever, so the training wheels are off. Hopefully you can hear me. And it's not just my face making empty flapping sounds. I am audible. <laughs> That's great. All right. Story time. So John asked, what's a comic that you read when you were a kid? Uh, unlike most of the people I've met in this community, uh, I was not into comics as a kid. Uh, my parents were not. So I was not introduced through my parents, which seems to be the main method of indoctrination, if you will. Hello. Oh, this is this is exciting, a little, little nerve wracking. Um, let's see, what am I saying? Comic books. I didn't get introduced to them as a kid. I first discovered comics probably in like high school. Uh, I decided to look into like the backstory of the X Men stuff. I was into the movie as a kid. But anyway, what comic books meant a lot to me growing up? My first comics were actually digital. Um, my parents ordered me a CD, a CD-ROM off of Amazon that had like 40 years worth of X-Men comics on it. So I would sit down at my desktop computer in junior year of high school. I was probably 15, 16. I would just sit there and scroll through a bunch of PDFs of Uncanny X-Men. I read from like the first issue up through somewhere in the 80s. I mean, 1980s. Like, So that'd be like 200 issues or something. I don't know the rough. I don't know the number. I got bored and uh, I gave up and I didn't read a single comic until... Actually, it was probably like a year later. It feels like a lot longer because time feels longer back then, but it wasn't that much later. Um, in high school, near the end, I discovered that the bookstore, there was a bookstore back in the day when they had bookstores. There was a bookstore up by the mall. So I would take the bus. I would uh, take the bus on the weekends, take my 60 cents, go up to the bookstore, pick up. Um, I started with X-Men because that was all I knew. I grabbed some trades and I would sit down in the chairs that they used to have in Borders and I would just hang out there like for a long time and just read comic books and put them back on the shelf. And nobody came and told me that it was against the rules. So I kept doing it and uh, I got bored of X-Men probably like that first day. But what I discovered uh, was Ultimate Spider-Man was the comic that kind of kept me coming back to the bookstore uh, week after week. And I got sucked into the trades of Ultimate Spider-Man, sitting there in the very comfortable chairs. My logic was like, if they didn't want you to hang out in the bookstore and read the books for free, they wouldn't put these sweet ass chairs. So I hung out and I, I read comic books and I put them back on the shelf and then I went home empty handed. Um, but yeah, I fell in love with Ultimate Spider-Man back then because what I learned reading X-Men is, uh, I don't know. I, I I respect the old comics and the Silver Age, all of the original kind of Marvel stuff, but it doesn't it doesn't read easily. Not for somebody like me who doesn't have the nostalgic connection to it as a child that a lot of these people did. If my father, for example, had introduced me to a bunch of old, you know, Stan Lee kind of comic books from back in the day as a kid, I might have had some more of attachment to that as a grown-up. I did not read Wolverine. Um but yeah, I got sucked into Ultimate Spider-Man because it told the storyline 
but in a kind of revamped and retooled and energized and condensed way, it kind of cut out all the fluff that didn't really go anywhere. That didn't really matter. And uh, I don't know, it constructed a kind of overall, very clean, clear, effective story. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, obviously, but that was the first book I ever read by Brian Michael Bendis, which uh, looking back started a bit of a, uh, what do you call it? There it is. I'm in reverse. Uh, fascination, I guess, might be the right word. Obsession, appreciation, all of the above. I might have read a little Wolverine over the years. He's not that bad. That's a whole nother video. Wolverine's not too bad. He just kills the whole X-Men. I don't know. He sucks the oxygen out of the room. I've, I've said that frequently about Wolverine. But anyway, I'm talking about Ultimate Spider-Man because... John wants to know what comics I read growing up and what influenced me the most. And I would say those trips that I took to Borders and hung out in the chairs and read for hours on end. Uh, before, I think I think I had a cell phone. I think it was I think it was after cell phones, but you know, my parents knew where I was. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I would just hang out and, and read Ultimate Spider-Man. And eventually, um, a year or two later, when I was at college, I, one of my roommates was really into comics, and he had a he had a pretty nice collection of um, graphic novels. He had, you know, the classics. He had Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns, and I got I got sucked into all of all of those comics. That's actually the first time I ever read Green Lantern was with that guy. So that is another formative experience for me in my history of growing to love comics. But the the big one I think would be me taking the bus and uh, hanging out and exploring Ultimate Spider Man all by myself, all at the bookstore. It was fun. I miss that. I miss being able to do that. I remember um, they had uh, little security tags in the book, like, you know, for thieves. Like, if you take the book and walk out the door, it's going to beep on the little sensor things that they had. But they would put these little security tags in the in the book, inside the book, on the pages. And sometimes they would be on top of word bubbles, and I couldn't read what was going on. So, uh don't, I know uh, Kate and Charlie are probably going to be watching this. I took those off if I needed to. If I had to read what was going on under there, uh, I, I peeled off the little uh, anti-theft warning and I put them back. I didn't steal anything. <laughs> I was very tempted just to see what would happen, you know, see if it would go off, if they had like some kind of backup security device somewhere in the book. But yeah, yeah, that, that was my story. I was hanging out at the bookstore reading Ultimate Spider-Man, and that's kind of how that all started, and now I'm trying to uh, collect all of them. It's it's a lot. There's a lot there. I'm not trying that hard, but I'm coming into Ultimate Spider-Man as, as I go. I'm uh, I'm honestly surprised that people are, are joining me on here. I'm, 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 I'm grateful. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I just got done at the uh, comic book shop, actually getting all the new books ready for tomorrow, so... I'm going to be up for a few more hours and then go to sleep since I've been awake all night, like always. In another video, I would like to hear how you turn to a life of Green Lantern. Oh, yeah, that's a that's another topic for another day. That's How does anybody, you know, turn to any superhero? I'll have to, I'll have to think about that one. Hi, kitty. I think if I put a cat in this video, it might increase my odds of getting picked by John and or Charlie and or Kate. And she really wants to get up here. I'll allow it. Oh, wow. She really wants to get up here. So, yeah, I'm just hanging out at home, hanging out with the kitty. I'm going to go, uh, after I'm done here, I'm going to go grab my comics. I'm going to read my comics. Getting ready for a, uh, doing a video tomorrow with Tom. I'm going to Tom's. We're doing our live stream that we always do on Wednesdays. We're supposedly going to be doing a video on our favorite comic books of the month of January. We'll see how that goes. I've got a pretty hefty stack of January books. You can kind of see them right here. I've been keeping them separate so I don't forget what came out in January and, and what didn't. And it's a whole mess. But yeah, January, top five, top whatever. I don't know. Top five is kind of trademarked already by us, me and John. But yeah, Tom and I are going to do some kind of... Uh, list about our favorite books of the month. So um, I've got a, a few more uh, 
a few more books from the last couple of weeks that I need to consider. I need to read and take notes. I've been taking notes because I forget everything. So yeah, I'm rambling. Ultimate Spider-Man, going to the bookstore, kind of stealing, but not stealing, ripping off the security tags. It's a whole lot of fun. What are your thoughts about the upcoming Three Jokers Black Label comic book? Actually, funny story. I'm reading the Justice League New 52 right now. I actually just finished that run. And that's when Batman sits in that super chair and gets all the super information downloaded into his brain. And I believe that's when he finds out there are three Jokers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm definitely going to get it. My thoughts about the black, uh, yeah, the black label in general are a little cautious. I feel like they might be taking a step back after uh, Bruce Wang, which would be a mistake. I think that's the whole point of that whole label. Anyway, Three Jokers is going to be cool, but I'm kind of looking forward to that. Uh, I want to I read Superman year one. I've uh, got some Superman things up here. I'm a little bit of a Superman fan, so it'd be cool to read a Frank Miller. And uh, John Romita Jr., I think, is doing the art on that one. I got issues. Hey, I'm just, just about ready to leave. <laughs> Sorry, you came at the wrong time. I'm gonna I'm gonna end this stream before before uh, that gets that what that's what she said. You're at work. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. I work graveyard. This is like my Friday night, early Saturday morning. My schedule's so weird. I can't think of what time it is, what day it is right now. I just know I don't have to work tonight, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read some comics and go to sleep. Ah. <sighs> Thank you guys. Thank you for joining me. This was cool. I hope to do this more. I gotta enter more contests. Hopefully I win. That'd be cool. But I didn't do it to win. I did it so I could do this. Get some uh, practice. I feel like the I'm getting a I'm getting a sunlight on my face. That's gotta go.